Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm David. In today's video I'm going to be uh, just going over what I'm doing in this area here um, as far as the bridge and the track bed and then if it arrives I might get on to constructing some form of basic tunnel liner as well just so I've got everything in place um, that will be either under or around the track um, so I know when I install the track that it all fits perfectly. So what I've done since the uh, video on laying the cork is I've actually added this extra piece here and I've also cut the correct second radius curve that fits perfectly in there. Um, but obviously before I glue this down what I need to do is get the bridge deck installed. So here's the bridge I'm using. I've showed it to you before I believe. Uh, if not this is a Wills river or canal bridge. At the moment it's unpainted, I think I will paint it up in this video and get it installed properly. Um, but as you can see, even with the bridge installed, there's still quite a gap either side of it where the cork is just floating. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, fill in these gaps either side. Now I've pushed the bridge more to the, this side here, as here the, uh, the walls can take up most of the uh, embankment. And I do have walls to install on this side as well, but I think over here I will have more more of a, a, a rolling slope down, and here can be a sharper sharper embankment. Ordinarily what I would have done is had probably some plywood or something um, here and here, but obviously as I'm not at home I don't have any wood with me, and I don't have the facilities to cut wood even if I did have it. So what I'm going to do, I think, is 3D print some sections to fill in these gaps. So the first stage, which I've already done, I've got just some pieces of paper and I've cut them into templates that fit exactly where I need the uh, 3D printed parts to go. And we've got one for this side as well. And I'm going to measure them up, draw them out on the computer to the correct size and then uh, print them out in plastic. Okay then, so an hour and a bit later on I've got these two pieces, they're just 4mm um, plastic and I've added a little lip so I can glue it to the underside of the bridge, so this one fits in here quite nicely and this one should fit over there then they should provide me the support for the cork road bed. Uh, one thing I have noticed though is this bridge is a little bit low so what I need to do is raise it up a little. And I think it's actually lower by the width of a piece of cork. Yeah, that feels about right. So what I'm going to do is cut some cork that will go underneath the bridge and we can test that out and then I'll need to get the bridge with pretty much its final painting done. Um, I'm not sure about weathering it now. I might leave that until after all of the scenery is in, so that will be quite a while. But I need to get it painted at least um, before I glue it in and glue the track bed on top. So uh, yeah, let's crack on. Okay then, so I've got these two little bits of cork glued in with hot glue. And if I just place, place the bridge on, it's now actually a tiny tiny bit high. Uh, this is 3mm cork and I think it probably only needs to be about 2mm. So what I can do is just before I install the bridge if it's really that uh, worrying the uh, height difference you can sand cork really easily so I might sand that down by a millimeter and see how that looks. Once I have the hot glue gun out I uh, glued these little abutment retaining walls on a little better all four of them were originally glued with poly cement when I built the kit. This is how the kit's meant to go together, how the instructions say it should be. Um, two on this end I did knock off uh, by accident, but this one was coming really loose. And this one was the only one that was actually attached properly with poly cement. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure if I built it incorrectly or something, but the, uh, yeah, the walls really didn't want to stay on. So what I've done is just filled in the backs of them. Um, with hot glue and they're really solid now. 
At the moment I've got the bridge on a piece of cardboard on my desk. The overspray from the airbrush isn't too bad, so hopefully this should be alright if I aim carefully. Uh, the first stage, as always with painting anything, is to get some inspiration. Um, so first off, um, I've watched a video and read the magazine article from the Hornby magazine on how they uh, painted one of these bridges just last month. So that's given me some ideas for how other people paint this kit in particular. And I've also been looking at some photos of bridges in and around Shropshire, which is where the layout's vaguely based, just to give me some ideas. So the first thing I'm going to do is something I learned from the Hornby magazine article, is just to stripe the bridge with different sort of undertones, which uh, you might be able to see through the paint later on, and they'll give ideas of different stainings and different coloured stones. Um, it will look daft to begin with, but it should all come together by the end. Okay, so the next stage is going to be to get a nice dark grey or black wash. Uh, I've just mixed up some Vallejo air paints with a bit of added water here. This is actually in a shop glass. Um, so it's nice and clean, it's had vodka in it recently, so... Okay. Okay, so the bridge is starting to come together quite nicely. The uh, washes and original airbrushing have had a little bit of time to dry. They're not fully dry yet. Um, but before I crack on with the outside of the bridge and getting these tops completely done, I need to flip the bridge over, and I think I'm going to work on the inside for a while now, um, get the inside all done, and then I can start finishing off the outer paint job. So the lining of the bridge here is... Um, made of bricks, it's brick plastic hard. So the first thing I'm going to do, which is what I normally do, is just run um, a white wash over it. Okay so we've got the uh, the nice wash in. You can see we've got these stripes. There's a tiny bit of wash left on the brush so you can see to do a stripe you just sort of gently dry brush these streaks. Ooh. Gently dry brush streaks on. And they look like the water that's flowing down. We can then come along in a minute with the airbrush again and tone down all of this brickwork together. And then it should look quite good. Okay, so I've just gone around with a little bit of grey just to darken up all of the brick and tone it down a little bit. Now I'm going to come back with some, I think, some browns maybe, just to make them less of a bright red colour. And we're going to continue to add lots of sort of watermarks and streaks and stuff as well. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone over with some nice brown and a bit of black as well. We've really darkened up the bottom where it would be right next to the waterline, or perhaps even under the waterline, depending on uh, how high I do the resin. And uh, yeah, we've just darkened over the brick overall. You can see the original colour there is this bright sort of reddy colour and now we've got it nice and dark. You can still see the mortar lines in quite a few places. What I'm going to do now, wait for this to dry one last time and then we can set about doing some final white streaks of the limestone and different uh, minerals coming through the brick and then we can crack on with the rest of the paint job on the outside of the bridge where we know we're not going to have to be turning it upside down all the time. What I've also done is when I had some grey paint in the airbrush instead of pouring it down the sink I've used it up on the deck of the bridge just to darken that up so when we put the ballast on if anything shows through it would be that nice dark grey okay I'll be back okay so I've been sat watching some videos and just doing some streaks here and a lot of dry brushing you can see I've added back the mortar lines in some places over here it looks like there's a patch of new brick perhaps here um, all the dirt's been chipped away or something you can see generally we've got loads of streaking down the sides and it looks quite nice. And this is how you'll see it on the layout really. You can just see it's nice and dark but we've got those streaks underneath there. 
and it's the same on the other side. Okay then, so we're going to now finish off the actual stonework of the bridge. So what I've got here is some surface primer um, from Vallejo, and this is a Israeli sand colour. Don't have to use primer. Um, I'm just using this sort of stony colour, and I'm going to merge together all these sort of patchwork we've got, and hopefully it should look quite good. Okay, so that light coat has just sort of blended it all together, but you can still see the undertones uh, still coming through quite well. What I'm going to do now is a final couple of washes and a, perhaps a little bit of dry brushing just to, uh, just to bring a little more detail in, and then we can get on with gluing it in. Okay, so I've got, the, I've got both the scenic boards now on my bed instead of just the one, mostly so I can get the lighting rig on. Now we can see the bridge in full light. I'm actually really happy with how it's come out. Um, you can see I've just done some white washes, like the same sort of mineral staining down the front of the bridge. I haven't touched the back. The back is still pretty plain, it doesn't have much weathering on it. Um, but I can do that once it's all installed and I've done the scenery. I just wanted to get the bulk of the painting and weathering done, particularly on the underside of the bridge here, which I won't be able to get to once the bridge is installed. Um, just so I can now glue this in place and then glue the track bed across it ready for when the track arrives okay guys so it's been a, um, at least a day maybe two since I've filmed anything for this video the bridge is completely solidly glued in um, and the cork is down perfectly what I have done is temporarily um, put in this piece of flexi track with track pins now, I won't be using track pins when I actually do the layout properly. This is just to test. Um, I was using double sided tape, but it wasn't quite strong enough. Um, so, short of actually installing the track, the only thing I could really think of is temporarily using some track pins. And then this piece of track can go and hide in the storage yard where you won't be able to see the holes in it um, from this little experiment here. So. What we're doing next, we've got this tunnel portal, so it's going to go around here. It's just a Pico model scene tunnel portal. Um, cheap and cheerful, it's about £4, maybe a little bit more. I've been sat at my desk earlier this morning um, getting rid of, it comes, there's quite a lot of flashing on it and um, there were sprues on the back side which I'd cut off and on the front side there were several what looked like mould release pins um, well the circles left behind from them so I've just tidied it all up and it looks quite a lot nicer and then I've 3D printed, this is an experiment here a tunnel liner so it should slot perfectly there and I designed it on the computer to be the same radius as second radius and it's got the correct same arch shape I don't know if you can see that and it should just clip in there's a little ring on the back of the tunnel portal and it should slot on there there we are, perfectly then I've just mapped the arch that we have on the tunnel portal around a second radius curve and it gives us this really nice flowing tunnel shape. So what I'm going to do is try and have a go at installing that there and testing it with a long coach and see how it works. Okay so I'm really happy with the tunnel liner I 3D printed. As I said it's the same oval of the actual uh, tunnel portal mapped around the curve so if you look on the inside there's really nice smooth curves just like a real tunnel would be um, when they're properly engineered. Tunnels I've done in the past, all I've done is just folded over a bit of card or something on the inside. So this is a big step up as we've got the correct 3D geometry, so we've got curves in both axes. And then if we have a look here, the longest coach I've got, one of the longest coaches you can find, this is a Hawksworth brake. 
perfect. Absolutely brilliant. So I'm going over halfway on the coach so I know that even when it continues through the rest of the curve it should be fine. Of course I don't have the track there yet. This is, I think is my longest bit of stock. I might try the class 40 or something. But no, that seems to be great. What I will have to do is cut the cork so we can get this down to the correct height as well. At the moment it's sort of resting on top of the cork. You can see in the design already what I've done is cut this notch which matches the curved back scene. So it sort of self-locates every time anyway. Okay then, so a little more progress has been made. I've spent this morning painting the tunnel portal. I tried to use the same method as I used for the bridge. Um, so obviously it starts off the sort of grey colour. Then I primed it in the desert sand, which is a similar colour to how this bridge started out. Then I put the brown stripes on and the grey wash. Um, what I ended up doing then is dry brushing a lighter stone colour on, just to bring out the surface of the stones quite a bit more. But I thought that was a little bit bright, so then I toned it down with a final coat of desert sand. And then we've just given it a final bit of weathering just now. Um, so the black, where the uh, steam and smoke and whatever goes up here, all the soot. There's also some black streaks and a little toning down everywhere. And that looks really good. I also cut the uh, cork out so that, that it fits perfectly flat. And I've added a piece back here. Um, you can just see it poking out there. That fills in the rest of that hole. And it still fits perfectly. I've given it another test with my coaches. And I'm really, really happy with that. Pretty happy with the work we've got done in this video over the past couple of days. Obviously we've got the bridge entirely painted and glued in in its final position with these two 3D printed extra sections that span the gap. I've got the cork glued in its final position and obviously this test track which is pinned down. I will be removing this off camera before I install the proper track uh, which will have it will be glued in for a start so you don't see any nails. It will also be super elevated and stuff like that. By the time you see this video hopefully all the track will have arrived. The points are on order, I have paid for them all um, but I'm just waiting for the, it's actually the three-way points to come into stock before my order gets dispatched from the model shop I bought it from. Um, I say by the time this video is out they'll be here and that's because I'm going to upload these videos over the next week or so uh, whilst I won't be at university. I'm actually going down to my girlfriend's new house for Easter. They've just made a big move from Shropshire uh, where we normally live and where we both went to school. Um, and their family has just moved down to Cornwall, her and her parents, so I'm going to go see them, help them move into their new house. Also, hopefully I might get some footage to show you guys um, of a railway viaduct just near then, and a few other things like that. Obviously we are in a, um, we have been in a Covid bubble since the start of the pandemic, well actually since the second lockdown I think it's been. So uh, yeah, it should all be fine. Then I'll be back here and hopefully we can lay the track and start installing all the electronics. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Feel free to check out the playlists I've made for both this layout and my main layout at home. And I'll see you next time.